It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Amanda Price. She is a member of the Michigan House of Representatives. And I want to speak with you about our children. Um, I learned recently that children who at the end of third grade are not reading at grade level are four times more likely not to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. And those that don't graduate high school are 63 times more likely to wind up in prison. It is amazing. Yeah, and I think there's there's other complications with that. Uh, um, you know, you're not going on to have a, a life that you're capable of. You, you can't hold a job as easily and get a job as easily. So, um, it is um, has ramifications beyond what you think it does. And it's remarkable that we can look at third grade and we know all the studies indicate that really is the turning point. Mm -hmm. If we don't get kids reading by third grade, they will start to fall behind at a greater pace. And by the time they get to middle uh, school and high school, they're, they're so flummoxed that it's hard to bring them back. That's a good word for it because right? I, I've heard a lot of stories from moms and kids about how frustrated they are when they can't read. And one mom compared to it last week. To, so there's a, a children's book called uh, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Mm. The little girl said, Mom, it feels like the middle of that book when all the letters fall in on themselves and it's so confusing I can't make heads or tails out of it. So, um, And what we know is having a reading deficiency, let's call it at third grade, doesn't necessarily mean there's an intelligence question. No. It could simply mean that, you know, developmentally there's some question and so we just need to intervene. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what you have been focused on here in the legislature. Uh, the bill is known as HB 4822 and it focuses upon looking at that third grade and trying to determine what the best approach is when there is a child that is falling behind. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about HB uh, 4822. So this bill would um, have children be assessed at the beginning of kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. And that, if I may, I don't mean to interrupt, but that is critical. It is. Because to all of a sudden swoop in in third grade and say, ah, oh, there's a problem. <laughs> at that point, it, I don't want to say it's too late, but we need interventions yeah. before then. Is that fair, Representative? Oh, very much so fair. So have an assessment mm -hmm. beginning of school. If you identify a deficiency, then come up with a reading plan mm -hmm. for that child. Um, they'll be reassessed in the middle of the school year to see did they get on track, do they still have a little bit more work to do, keep working that reading plan at the end of the, the grade mm -hmm. they'll be assessed again and um, that way parents will know where the kid is, the kids will know where they are and then they can start addressing it but it is to the point of if you're looking at it at the end of third grade it's too late right. and we need to shift our focus back to those earlier grades, get the kids on track at that point, and avoid that, that third grade line. So let's talk about the third grade line because that is a pivotal moment. Mm -hmm. And under 4822, we're looking at what is the best approach if the kid is still behind grade level. And the question becomes, do we look toward retention? Mm -hmm. Another word for saying holding them back, having them repeat third grade. You know, for so long we've had this social promotion and there are lots of different studies that address whether that social promotion is best or retention is best. What have you learned during this process about retention? Well, universally teachers will tell you retention is not mm -hmm. good. The studies say retention is not good and I will counter with this, this bill is not about retention. I understand. Because this is uploading or front loading it all mm -hmm. to do interventions and then if a child is more than a grade level behind at the end of third grade, so four years of assessments right. and interventions and still not there, if they're more than a grade level behind, they're going to be retained to help with a different teacher. Um, so right. you're going to have a, a different methodology and, with that child. And let's remember, oftentimes, and forgive me, but boys <laughs> you know can be a I little, had two boys yes, can be a little <laughs> developmentally behind girls and that doesn't say anything about intelligence and especially if they have a later birthday mm -hmm. you know it could be that they may have been more appropriate anyway mm -hmm. in that lower grade and if approached in a way that is seen as not as a punishment but as this is going to be a benefit it really can be life-changing for these young 
boys and girls for yeah. that matter. I hear a lot of anecdotal stories from boys or men right. now that need a little bit extra help. I also think that if you're going to hold a child back, um, it's more maybe appropriate to do it in earlier grades right. where the stigma doesn't attach and the kids don't feel that and the brothers and sisters don't right, of tease them. And <laughs> the question is how is Michigan going to determine proficiency? Will it be a single test? Will it be a battery of tests? A holistic approach? Do we know yet? In the bill, there's there's a wide um, a range of it, so you can do it um, on one of several ways. Sure. It's not just one test. Okay, because one test, I mean, forgive right. me, but no, it's could not, have, it could have a bad day. Right. No, mm -hmm. it's just not just one test. It's mm -hmm. it's the assessments. It part of it is looking at the uh, M-step da data. Right. Um, and. and there are other ways to determine that. And let's talk about M-STEP because as we know, the most recent M-STEP results indicate that at grade three, 50% of students were showing proficiency in English language arts. Mm -hmm. Does that suggest that 50% need to be retained? No. No. It, it, <laughs> well, that score, the English language arts right. score is made up of four, four claims, they call them. I'm not sure why, but okay, it is what and, it is. And I think two of those claims may indicate the reading score. So we don't have that breakdown yet. Okay. And um, those scores could indicate the child is, you know, beginning level third grade. Um, oh, I see. So it's not more than I it's understand. not more than a grade level behind. Um, so we'll have to look at that, and then the state board makes a, a cutoff on proficiency rates. So we'll still have to wait for that. I understand that there also are certain programs, maybe in other states, Florida, Indiana, wherever it may be, whereby the student, even if retained, if their proficiency speeds up quickly enough, they can then get back into grade level. They may be in third grade for reading, but fourth grade in math. Is that also the... That's, that's contained in this legislation okay. as well. So if you're um, retained in third grade, but doing well in math, right. and you can go into those other um, subject matters, still be enrolled in third grade because right. that's what we have to deal with, um, but move ahead on those other. And then hopefully, um, if you've got enough intervention and working hard enough, um, maybe you could get up to grade level in the middle of fourth grade. Okay. So the kid could right. move up. I understand the governor is supportive of mm -hmm. the legislation. Mm -hmm. What about your friends in the Senate? Where are they today? I know it's I'm, a moving target, but what are your friends in the Senate saying? I think um, from folks I know that have talked <laughs> to a lot of them, they're supportive too. Um, we are not doing well nationally in reading, right. and we need to do a lot better. I think the State Board of Education is even moving along mm -hmm. those lines that um, something dramatically different has to happen. So let's presume the bill goes what's the timeline for implementation? Because obviously, if we don't have these programs now, to all of a sudden impose retention at this rate may be a little Well, some states tricky. have done that. Oh, Florida, really? Florida like that. passed it in uh, late um, spring and implemented that fall. Wow. Um, ours is a much slower ramp up, and I say it much slower because right. I, I wanted a faster track and we, oh, okay. we needed to slow it down. So, to give you an idea, my grandson Braxton is four, um, he will possibly go into kindergarten next year. By the time he's in third grade, it would affect him in terms of retention. I see. Okay. So um, that's, it's that's about a four-year ramp up okay. to it. And I, I feel like it's a little too long because kids' lives are being affected. But compromise is part of the legislative process. Yeah. Her name is Amanda Price. She is a member of the Michigan House of Representatives. We're in Lansing today inside the state capitol. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.